There are times when the internet overreacts to things and things get blown way out of proportion. There are a lot of times when that happens. And then there are times when the internet does exactly what it should do. They make their voices heard and good things come from it. Today, we have an example of the latter. Back in September, Google, as I said here in this article, dropped a bombshell on the Android community saying that in the future, the very, very near future, they were going to begin mandating that developers verify their identity with Google in order for their applications to be able to be sideloaded. Now, let me be very, very clear about this. If you want to have your app in the Google Play Store, they already have basically this exact same policy in place. Google wants to know who you are before your app is in the Play Store. And the point to that is that if you put malware in the Play Store, they know who you are, and the fact that you put malware into the Play Store, they can then basically block you, ban you. You don't get to be in the Play Store anymore. You're going to have to come up with another ID or something to work around. And they said that when they instituted this change, that made a big difference in terms of improving the quality of apps that are in the Play Store. I think this was done in 2023, if I'm remembering correctly. This, however is basically extending that policy out to the sideloading of applications. And I think, quite expectedly, this drew a lot of ire. On one hand, it's really not that hard to imagine why Google would want to do this. They say they have research that indicates a significantly higher risk of malware originating from sideloaded apps compared to those in the Play Store. They say that over 50 times more malware is installed on Android devices via sideloading versus through the Play Store. And that is something that I'm sure they want to reduce. There is still this broad perception that Android phones are kind of like the wild, wild west, that you can get malware really easily on these phones. And that compared to the perception of iPhones, which don't really have that kind of baggage, is a pretty major detriment to Android as a whole. So closing these loopholes, making it a bit harder for, what would you say, malevolent developers, making it a bit harder for them to distribute their malware anonymously, again, it's not that difficult to imagine why they would want to do this. But of course, the Android community was quick to point out some other reasons why maybe, just maybe, this isn't the best idea. People do have things like their revanced app. Uh, tons of people repeatedly I got this comment about how they were trying to block YouTube revanced because they want to make sure you're watching ads on YouTube. And I'm sure that there is at least some truth to that. But that's definitely not the sole reason why they're doing this. There's a reason why it's called YouTube revanced instead of just Vanced, because there was a YouTube Vanced, and it was actually blocked, and the reason that it was uh, kind of gotten rid of, the developer was sent a cease and desist, was because they were literally uh, manipulating, modifying the YouTube APK, and then distributing that. Revanced allows you to take the YouTube APK from Google, modify it yourself, and install it, and Google has had no problem with that for years. They, they stopped the first one, why haven't they done anything to stop the second one for years? Because I don't really think they care all that much. That's not what's going on here. And it's also worth pointing out that Google has explicitly said this is about malware and scams and fraud and things like that. That's what they're looking for. That's what would get a developer blocked. It's not about these other things. But nonetheless, that is the concern people have. It's like Google is arming themselves with a tool that could be used for blocking these other sorts of applications. And so there's a lot of applications that people are concerned for, you know, their ability to remain available. Things like gray area apps, emulators. Okay, so what if Nintendo reaches out and says, we want to know who made that emulator? Of course, like apps that allow you to do illegal things like piracy, I think that that's probably like at a larger risk of being, you know, kind of something Google reaches outside the malware circle that they said this was about and goes ahead and kind of blocks that developer. That kind of makes a bit more sense to me. People also have had concern about government overreach using this too, right? What if you're in uh, a country where your government is a bit oppressive and you've made an application that they don't like and they reach out to Google and say, we need to know who this is. It strips developers who might need anonymity of that anonymity. And all of these things, I think, are valid concerns. Even though Google has said that's not what this is for, 
lots of things get used for things that they weren't explicitly said that they were for. So again, those I think are still at least somewhat valid concerns. But guys, we do now have a blog post from the Android developers blog that I, I think you guys are going to be fairly happy with. So we're going to jump through this a little bit. They say, we appreciate the community's engagement and have heard the feedback. There's an M dash in there, so maybe this was written by AI, I don't know. Specifically from students and hobbyists who need accessible an accessible path to learn, and from power users who are more comfortable with security risks. We are making changes to address the needs of both groups. Fantastic. They start off by kind of doubling down on their reasons. Online scams and malware campaigns are becoming more aggressive at the global scale of Android. Billions of users. Real harm for people around the world is what you're going to end up having, especially in rapidly digitizing regions where many are coming online for the first time. Maybe they don't really understand the risks of these things and they are more susceptible. So again, not hard to understand why they would want to do this. For students and hobbyists, we heard from developers who were concerned about the barrier of entry when building apps intended only for a small group like a family or friends. We are using your input to shape a dedicated account type for students and hobbyists. This will allow you to distribute your creations to a limited number of devices without going through the full verification uh, process. So that's, I think, that's decent. We need more detail on exactly what that means, but still. This is the part I think that you guys are really going to like for uh, empowering experienced users. Based on this feedback and our ongoing conversations with the community, we are building a new advanced flow that allows experienced users to accept the risk of installing software that isn't verified. We are designing this flow specifically to resist coercion, ensuring that users aren't tricked into bypassing these safety checks while under pressure from a scammer. It will also include clear warnings to ensure users fully understand the risks involved, but ultimately puts the choice in their hands. That is exactly, precisely what they should have done from the start. And this is basically what I talked about when all of this news broke. If you go back and watch some of my original content on this, this is basically what I said. I was like, this is, you know, probably what Google should do is they should just give users a way to bypass this that just has, you know, blaring sirens and red lights that say, you, this might be a terrible idea. Like, are you really sure you want to do this? And if you say yes, that's up to you. Like, that is you taking that risk on yourself. Google can't be responsible if they have warned you sufficiently. And that's what it sounds like they're going to do. They're just going to warn you sufficiently and say, hey, you're an adult. It's your phone. It's your property. Do whatever you want to do. But just make sure you're not doing something really, really dumb. So I think for me, this pretty much gets rid of the issue with this policy. I know that some of you will be adverse to doing this. But to me, this is kind of where Google is at their best. They are doing something that I've described as being more Apple-like, kind of closing down their ecosystem a little bit to give users more security, to alter the perception of Android from being the wild, wild west to being a safer operating system. But they also listen to their users, and they're giving us power users that back door that we can still go through if we want to take those risks. So you're kind of getting your cake and eating it too. You're getting the best of both worlds. And I think that Google should be applauded for listening to their users. I mean, let's be real, guys. What percentage of people are sideloading apps? It's probably not that high of a percentage, right? And the fact that they listen to us, the people who were upset about this, and they're giving us this ability... I think that's pretty cool, right? Like, I, I know some of you guys are going to be like, there he goes again, just praising Google. That's all he ever does. Clearly, you don't watch all my content if you think that. But I don't know what else to say. I think that this is a really positive change that I'm, I'm very pleased with Google for making. Let me know what you think, though, in those comments down below. How relieved are you? Do you think that, I mean, you could still criticize them for attempting this in the first place. Like, it, that was a mistake. It was a mistake to try it the way they were going to try it. They should have rolled this out in a way that was better from the start, or they should have rolled this out as a concept and said, we're looking for feedback and not made it seem so kind of final so that people wouldn't panic quite as bad. Obviously, there were some mistakes made. But at the end of the day, we've arrived at a pretty decent, <laughs> pretty decent place, I think. But again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.